All right, playing with the Henry original a little bit today. Let's have some fun. All right, <laughs> well, we are gonna be having some fun with this little rifle today. We load it on Sunday, but we're not gonna shoot all week, although that is the original plan with this rifle. This is that dang Yankee rifle you can load on Sunday, shoot all week. This is an awesome, awesome rifle. Let's talk about it a little bit more, have some fun today. All right, guys, exciting day. We're gonna be talking about the Henry original here. And I tell you, this is a gun that I've had for about a year now. You can probably tell by all the patina all over the brass receiver and everything like that and all the handling marks. Um, I've had this gun for a while, been shooting it a lot, finally decided to get it out for a, a little range video. And uh, this is really, in my opinion, the, the rifle that defines Henry Repeating Arms as a company. You know, when it comes to Henry, when you think Henry, this is the Henry you think of. Benjamin Henry invented this gun back in the 1860s. And guys, th this thing is a really, really awesome piece of history. You know, the original Henrys were not produced in very large numbers at all. They were issued in the Civil War to some degree. Yes, troops that had them loved them. We all know that. But they weren't really issued in the numbers necessary to really turn any, any true, true side in terms of changing the tide of a battle too much. Now, I'm sure they were used, obviously, to great effect. I mean, it is a repeating rifle that fires a cartridge. Uh, brass contained cartridge and back then that was even in itself kind of an odd concept and it's a repeater that holds 13 shots plus one in the magazine so by 1860s technology this thing is space age i mean th this might as well be the newest and greatest this was the most modern rifle in the world at the time and there are design aspects of this rifle that are still used in in you know various lever action rifles now Okay, so that's really awesome. You know, you've got a brass receiver, brass butt plate. You've got a walnut stock, beautiful fit and finish, um, excellent finish on the barrel. I mean, beautiful bluing. Just a lot of small details that it takes uh, going into building a rifle like this, and they definitely do a great job of it. It fires a 4440 uh, Winchester centerfire, uh, which is basically just a centerfire version of the original 44 Henry uh, rimfire. The original rifles were rimfire. This is a centerfire. Uh, the ammunition that we're going to be shooting is this Ultra Max here. It's 200 grain, uh, you know, just lead bullet, pretty simple. Uh, very similar to the original type of round that would have been used uh, in the gun. And to compare ballistics, you know, your average infantry guy in the Civil War was using a rifle, whether it was a three band infield or a Springfield, depending on which side of the war you're looking at, a 58 uh, diameter Manet ball that weighs 500 grains is going to be getting out of the muzzle around 1,200 feet per second, and it's going to be yielding about 1,000 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle. So to compare that to this, if you've got a 200-grain bullet moving at around the same velocity, you're going to get about six to 650 uh, uh, foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle. So you're getting roughly, let's just say for academic purposes, roughly half, if not maybe just a little more than half, of the energy of a Springfield or, or infield musket uh, that would be in use by a standard infantryman. Now, in terms of accuracy, a Springfield musket can deliver the goods and it can really get out there and punch that Manet ball out to kind of longer ranges. And you can hit point targets with them out to some pretty obscene ranges. Um, so a man back then that was armed with the Henry as a soldier, he had a uh, fast reloading um, weapon that he could reload fast, he could shoot it fast, he could put down a lot of lead, in a very short amount of time, and he could reload it pretty quick. So as a military weapon in its day, the Henry was definitely ahead of its time, and it was really the first rifle to kind of dive into that repeater, you know, um, cartridge-contained type arrangement that we know today. I mean, every single rifle that we know today, basically, in some basic form, has its lineage from a rifle like this. So there's a lot of design aspects you're gonna see in other modern rifles that still hold true from the original Henry. Um, these things are great. We're gonna shoot at some for you today. We've got it loaded up. Uh, we're gonna be shooting it at some extended ranges. Um, a lot of videos you're gonna see on this rifle, you're gonna see a lot of people shooting 50 yards or so. Uh, we know the gun will definitely deliver the goods at 50 yards. If you consider combat ranges, 
like soldiers on a field and skirmish lines during the Civil War or something like that, having a rifle like this, I mean, you would have been just absolutely just way, way better armed than anybody else on the field. Unless, of course, they had another Henry. But um, it's really awesome. We're going to shoot it some. We're going to try some targets between 100 and 300 yards. And I'm going to try to connect here. I'll show you the loading procedure for the gun. It's pretty interesting. And we'll talk about a few of the other unique design features as we go. So uh, let's shoot it. You notice there's no handguard. So you're literally grabbing the barrel and the bottom of the uh, magazine. The magazine tube itself is open on the bottom. You can see the rounds in there. We're going to discuss that a little bit as we go. I'm going to try 100 first. All right, go ahead and send it. Yep. Right over the top of his head. This has a 200 yard uh, setting on the lowest setting on the, the sight ladder. So that means at 100, I've got to aim a little bit low and bullseye in order to get the round to hit at 100. Uh, shoot one more time, Eric. I don't know where that one hit. One more time. That zipped right past his head. Still hitting a little bit high. Okay. Let's see. There you go. Oh, I had to aim way low. I was like a foot under him. Holy cow. Zip right past his head again. Yep. All right. So windage-wise, it's definitely in there, but, you know, if you're shooting 200 grain ammo at 100 yards, you're going to be shooting about a foot and a half high. That's pretty typical. A lot of military rifles require a bullseye hold, and this is, for all intents and purposes, a military rifle. We're going to go out to 200 yards. And we're just, you know, since this ladder is set to two, we're just going to aim pretty much right at it. Yep, send it when you're ready. Yep. Elevation's perfect. Hit just off the uh, right side. Gotcha. It takes, <laughs> it takes, it takes a, a to get second there. to get down there, don't it? Yeah, you're uh, still favoring a little bit right. Elevation's perfect, though. That was just off the uh, left. Elevation is spot on, right across the board. Gotcha. Yep. It's always fun All watching right. those pills move in there. Once you get to a certain point when you're loading this rifle, the follower is going to get to the point where your hand is. You have to relocate your hand in order for that to keep going. So you'll feel it hit your hand, and that also, I guess, is kind of letting you know that you're about to get empty. All right. Oh yeah, certainly putting them in there. It takes a minute. Oh yeah. All out. So the way that this firearm is designed is just awesome. You can see that when the bolt strips the spent cartridge out, this follower pops up, basically this lifting gate, pops up and throws the brass out of the top. It uh, is awfully <laughs> a lot like a Vetterli. You guys are probably familiar with the Italian or the uh, Swiss Vetterlis that we've done videos on before where we've compared the mixture of actions that they use to make that particular rifle and the loading gate and ejector and the way that this firearm operates, the Vetterli pretty much takes the same attributes to make that firearm work the way it does. So that's pretty interesting. You can kind of see in later military rifles where uh, those particular design aspects are being integrated into that particular rifle. Again, on the loading of the gun, basically close the, the, uh, the lever, okay? There's actually a little lock down here on the bottom you can twist to lock the lever shut. So that's if you're walking around in the field or whatever and you don't want this thing popping open on you, you can actually lock the lever shut you don't have to do that, but I'm just showing you that it's there. So to load it, and you have to be really careful here, you're going to be seeing some additional shots of this. You want to pull 
the follower tab right here. It's spring loaded. You want to pull it up, but you do not want to slam that thing or let it go because if you do, you can uh, definitely damage things. You don't want to do that. All right. So you're going to pull it up, compress it, rotate to your left. There's a little tab right there that that follower kind of sits on. And then you're just going to take uh, rounds and drop them in. Now, I'm going to mention a couple of things about reloading 4440 ammo that you need to think about. And also, I'm going to share some issues that I've been having out of some of the factory ammo with this thing. The crimp on a 4440 has to be absolutely perfect for it to work in this type of a system. Because watch what happens. I'm dropping these rounds in. All right, first one lands in, no problem. But what's happening now? Each round that I drop in is impacting and hitting, and all that weight is impacting on that first cartridge. And if the crimp is not absolutely perfect, those rounds can kind of offset a little bit. And the overall length of this cartridge is extremely important for it to work properly. So in order for this gun to operate properly, the ammo has to be loaded to a very precise overall length. It has to be crimped exactly right. Now most of your commercial 4440 ammo that you can find is gonna have an appropriate overall length to work in the action of this, uh, of this rifle. But I found that like with some of the Magtech offerings that the crimp on the cartridge is not sufficient and they were offsetting a lot and causing them not to feed properly. And the mouth of the case was kind of opened up a bit on a lot of them and it just wasn't crimped properly and it was causing them to catch when they tried to feed up into the uh, actual chamber. So that's something to consider. So you can see there, I fill the tube back up, lift up, rotate back over, make sure it's settled in place. Now I could plus one it, but we got 13 shots in the magazine. All right, so we're gonna be kind of silly here and we're gonna go for 300 yards. 200, we, you know, once we got on top of the sights, we were connecting pretty easily. Remember guys, this is Civil War technology. So imagine you've got a repeater, you've got you know, smaller bore than a standard, uh, you know, 58 caliber, a little bit more uh, kind of velocity, a little bit more, uh, you know, easier to shoot because it's a little bit more anemic than a full-size Springfield. All right. Going for three, Chad. You going for the um, half-size D28 or the 22-inch uh, round? The round. Okay. Send it when you're ready. Ah, elevation looked pretty good. You hit just slightly to the left, about maybe I don't know, three, four inches off the uh, left side of the plate. Still a little bit to the left. Elevation's right on the money. Ooh, I couldn't tell if that was high or low. Hang on, one more time. Hard to keep track of that round. Long way. I lose it after it gets up to the top arc. Very, very hard to track. Okay, you're hitting just slightly high. Yep. <laughs> yep, on the money. Awesome. That's great. That was a little bit to the right there. Well, that one hit with some uh, thump, didn't it? A little high and right. It's a long way for this cartridge to go, guys. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the accuracy. I mean, once you know where to aim, it's pretty much on the money. Yeah, you're favoring a little bit on the right side this time. Wow. <laughs> Not bad. Well, that's one thing, too. This sucker gets hot because you're literally grabbing the barrel when you're, you're supporting the gun. You know, uh, the original Henry, it does have some heft to it. This is a very heavy rifle. Um, but I tell you what, 
it is such a joy to shoot. Absolutely no recoil. I mean, especially even from a bench, it's really not bad at all. And this is just a wicked fun gun to shoot. I've had this particular one, like I said, about a year, and we've been shooting it quite a bit. This is really the first time that I've ever had the opportunity to really take it out to longer ranges to kind of stretch the legs on the gun and see what it's capable of uh, providing in the way of accuracy at longer ranges. Um, you know, it is a little bit difficult to acquire a, a target way out there and, and really keep this thing where it needs to be, but once you know where to put the uh, front sight and you know kind of where it's hitting, it's really not hard at all to get those things to lob right in. So there's, there's an original Henry at 300 yards there. Uh, various distances, a little bit at 100. I was surprised how high the gun was shooting at 100, but you know, really not, uh, not shooting too terrible at all. I'm gonna load up another tube and uh, we'll take a few shots at an even smaller target at 300. Let's do it. All right, for the most part, the rifle's not doing too bad of a job as long as I do my part. We are going to up the ante on the challenge level and we're gonna shoot a half-size D28 at 300 yards with open sights. Henry Original here, 4440. And this is the equivalent of shooting a man-sized target at five, uh, 600 yards. So this is uh, <laughs> kind of stretching the legs. Maybe I'll be able to connect with it. It's a tiny little black dot way out there. It's tiny. It's tiny. All right, send it when you're ready. Ha! Hit! <laughs> yeah! I'll take it. Heck yeah. Yes, sir. Check that out. Oh. All right, this review's over. I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dude. <laughs> All right, that was just left. off the left side. Right, right in the middle. Now, there's a coyote down there. I'm gonna see if I can uh, peg that uh, shoot steel coyote at 300 yards. I don't know. Shoot the coyote, I think you should go for that eight inch popper over there on the left too. Send it. Ah, uh, you hit the lower right corner of the uh, half size D28. Just a little bit high from the coyote's head. Oh, right there it is, paws. Yep, right on the backbone. Oh, yeah. Good solid center mass hit. <laughs> yep. Well, I tell you what, <laughs> I could not be happier with the performance of this rifle at this distance. I mean, once you really kind of figure out where you're at, well, Mr. Wiley Coyote there, well, he, he, <laughs> he wouldn't be a happy camper after no, uh, you got on top of him. I'm wouldn't. really curious to see what kind of carrying energy this round has in terms of uh, lethality. I don't know. I mean, I think it, we might be getting on to another video concept we might do with this thing. Hmm. How 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 far will a 4440 kill? Maybe. I tell you what. I'm going to load up another tube, and we're going to get even more extreme on the measure of accuracy this thing's capable of. I'm going to take some shot at uh, shots at an eight inch popper at 300 yards. This is the equivalent of uh, getting headshots at 300 yards with this rifle. Let's do it. All right, we got our Henry top back off here. Gun's been running nice. We're gonna do something outlandish here. I'm gonna take some shots at our shoot steel gopher down there at 300 yards with a Henry with open sights. Just because we can and because it's fun. And because Chad enjoys watching me fail miserably. <laughs> I don't All know right. about that. But I Beginner's do Beginner's luck, first shot. Send it. I believe in you. Missing. Pretty much. <laughs> I saw an arc in there, it was slightly left, but I couldn't tell where the impact elevation was. One more time.
man, it's really hard to see up against those railroad ties. I'm just, I'm just for fun, just seeing what we can do here. Okay, that elevation looked good. It looked like it hit just a little bit to the left, maybe about six inches. Man, you're all right there around that thing. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's getting scared back down in his hole. I don't know. Right above his head. Oh, you're, I mean, it's literally like dropping two inches around, around him. I mean, it's right in there. All right, let's go back to our coyote then. You're still hitting a little bit high, actually. Yeah, you're hitting up there in the uh, lower right corner of the D28. Just over his back. <laughs> Same place, right over his back. <laughs> oh, man. Pretty much same place, dropped right behind him. Yep. Oh, right in the tail. Yeah, it's a little low there. <laughs> Man. <laughs> I'll tell you, I hope you guys can see in this video how fun this rifle is to shoot. It's definitely not a rifle that's for everybody. It's really for more of the kind of the aficionado or the collector or the military rifle enthusiast out there who has to have everything. But I tell you what, in terms of just shooting pleasure and fun factor, the original Henry is definitely a winner. This is one of those types of rifles that is certainly going to turn, uh, turn heads at the range, especially if you get out there and you start ringing some steel with it. You know, people will start going, you know, oh, what's that? I tell you, um, this rifle's definitely, in terms of all the different guns that I own, it's one of my favorites in terms of the, like just the nostalgia and kind of you know cool factor that goes into it and everything. And uh, it, it really is just one of those rifles that you kind of have to just shoot to really appreciate. Um, it's a very unique rifle, and uh, it really does kind of beckon back to the original uh, early development of you know, repeating small arms. It really is the original, literally the original. So um, I tell you, I think that uh, we're segueing here into a couple of different video ideas that I think we're gonna take on. One thing I wanna know is how deadly this cartridge can be at various ranges. Uh, we, we know, and it's, it's definitely no mystery that these rifles were used at some extended ranges during the Civil War and times thereafter or whatever. But the question is, how lethal is it at that distance? I mean, is it still deadly? I mean, you can hear that that cartridge is still hitting with some pretty good authority at the, the longer ranges. We do have some longer range here that we can, uh, you know, shoot this rifle at to see what it can do. So I'll tell you what, I think we're going to revisit, uh, you know, a video eventually with this particular rifle, and we're going to see, you know, how far various Civil War rifles are deadly out to. We know that a 58 caliber Mine ball will definitely harm you at some pretty dang long ranges. That's been proven, but just for academic purposes, I think we're gonna to touch on that subject, so stay tuned for that particular video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, we had a lot of fun making this video. It's always awesome when you can get an original Henry out to have some fun, and uh, I, just, I, I just love these rifles. They're so wonderful, so uh, thank you for watching today's video. We have many more on the way. Stay tuned, many, many more to come. We'll catch you next time.